was lost at a crossroads of life and death. Big doubts on my right, deep hurts on my left. God could not have felt more far away. God could not have felt more far away. I needed a mutual spiritual connection. Happy Labor Day weekend. We are so glad that you joined us this morning for our Sunday morning service. As we get ready to go into worship and into the Word with Pastor this morning, I want to ask you to do a few things. Make sure you've got your Bible, grab a cup of coffee, maybe get a notepad and a pen so that you can take notes. And then lastly, get your family around and get prepared. And as we go into service, ask the Holy Spirit to come and be right here with us today, just to indwell in our homes or wherever we're at today, wherever you might find yourself. Just ask the Holy Spirit to come, be a part of service, to speak to you, challenge you today in a great and powerful way. I'm excited about what this day holds for all of us. Let's go into worship. Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you lord turn his face toward you and give you peace lord bless you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face toward. 
children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and your children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and behind and beside you and beside you all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you.
come on, last time. Come on, gather your family and sing it. Amen. Hallelujah. Over your children. Over your family. He is with you. He is for you. Amen. We thank you for the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the morning, in the evening, as we go and as we come. Hallelujah. You are with us. You are for us. Hallelujah. We receive the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your love for us, God. That is relentless today. Your love pursues us. Hallelujah. Your love today heals us, accepts us, God. We thank you, Lord. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. Oh, you have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never
Come on and bless him for that reckless love. Woo, hallelujah. Where will we be without it, church? Where will we be without it? Oh, I know you were blessed just like I was this morning by the worship. Pastor Renee and Pastor Allen and our entire worship team, the musicians and our technical staff, they've just been doing an amazing job um, bringing us straight into a worship uh, atmosphere in our homes. And I know you were blessed this morning as I was. And uh, maybe this week, if you get a chance, just get on Facebook or drop them a note in the mail. Just let them know how much you appreciate what they're doing and thank them for just um, everything that they're pouring into us in this season that we're in right now. I know it's blessing you as it is me and I'm so thankful for the people that God has brought us to Hope and Life that just lead us straight into the throne room of God. So I know this morning you were blessed as I was. We're gonna just real quickly transition here and I'm gonna give you a few announcements that we have. Um, for some things with the church coming up and uh, some events that are gonna be taking place. And I just wanna highlight a few things for you before we go into our time of tithe and offering. Um, first of all, next Sunday, September 13th, we've got a couple things going on. For one, we have actually extended our uh, school supply drive one extra weekend. So uh, next Sunday, the 13th, if you have school supplies for, um, for us to gather and to collect, uh, to get into the hands of those that really need um, the extra help this season and this, this school year, you can bring those and drop those at the back of your car if you've got them in a bag or a box or whatever it is you're bringing them in. You can just park in your parking place, get out, put them behind the back of your car, and we'll have people there in the parking lot to pick those supplies up and uh, to, to take them to where we need to get them to. So once again, we're just going to extend it one more weekend because we, we want to do as much as we can for those uh, that are in need this season of, of school as it's getting started and getting back in, into session. So please make sure that you, uh, you help us with that and bring in your school supplies. September 13th. And also on September 13th, from 11 to 12 o'clock, immediately following our parking lot service there at Grayson High School, um, our youth are going to be having an event. And I think this might actually be their very first event as far as the, the COVID situation goes, um, where they're going to be getting out and uh, meeting there at Grayson High School, in, at, or I'm sorry, meeting at Grayson Park um, on that Sunday afternoon from 11 to 12 o'clock there at Grayson Park. They're going to have pizza, so bring your kids with you to church, and if they drive, they can head over. If they don't and you want to just drop them off there at the park, they'll have food uh, available for them, and you can go grab a bite to eat. They'll be th there for about an hour, and then you can come back, swing by, pick them up, and take them home. But that's September 13th. Make sure to have your students a part of that. It's going to be a great time together. September 20th is Back to Church Sunday. We're excited about this because we want to encourage you to bring uh, a guest or bring a friend, bring a family member uh, with you to church on September 20th for Back to Church Sunday. We're excited about uh, the day and what we have planned for that day. And so we want to make sure that we invite as many uh, new people and guests, friends and family members as we can. They can either come in the car with you or you can let them ride uh, in their car and park beside you. But we want to see them there with us on September 20th. So make sure that you're starting to invite uh, friends and family and people that you'd like to bring to church on September 20th. Um, also, September 27th, Pastor and I have a very special guest that's going to be with us, and I'm not allowed to give you any more information than that. Pastor's made me zip my lips. I can't tell you who it is, but we've got a special guest that's going to be with us there at Grayson High School uh, there in the parking lot with us for service on September 27th, that Sunday morning. And then following that, September 30th, Pastor has been feeling very challenged and feels that it's important for us uh, here in this last portion of the year. Um, he wants us to all gather together as far as a church goes and to participate in a 10-day fast that will start on September 30th and run through October the 9th. It will be a Daniel fast that he is calling us to. And I believe that it's gonna be a great uh, opportunity for all of us to just take a few days, 10 days is really not that long, to just you know push back things that might impede um, us hearing from the Lord and, and just really consecrate those those 10 days unto the Lord and just 
fast and pray and seek God as we're ending out the end of this year. So again, that Daniel fast will take place uh, September the 30th and it will end on October the 9th. So be uh, aware of that, be preparing for that. A um, Couple other things, we've got a ladies event that's coming up the very first weekend in October. Now I'm not gonna give you all the specifics yet because we're still working on a couple little details, but it's coming up the first weekend in October. We want you to be a part. It will be a virtual event due to COVID. We won't be able to meet face to face, but we will be having a virtual event for you, uh, ladies of Hope and Life. And if you want to um, be a part of that, we want to make sure that you're well aware of it. We'll be giving more details and information about that in the coming weeks, as well as we have a couples event that will be coming up the end of October. So I wanna highlight that as well to let you know about that as well. Again, it will be a virtual event and we will give you more information. Just stay tuned. Make sure you're watching our uh, Facebook, our uh, Instagram, our social media platforms, as well as the website, which will contain all the information that you need to know uh, concerning these events. So at this moment, we are going to transition now into our time of tithe and offering. And um, I just want to um, highlight something real quickly that I was thinking about the other day. Um, when I was a little girl, my grandparents, um, on both sides of my family, my mom and my dad's side, they grew a garden. Um, many of you probably have either grown a garden yourself or maybe you've had family members that have done the same thing. And you know what it's like to be that little kid in the garden and pulling up all the, either pulling up the weeds that they put you, your grandparents put you to work or maybe you're standing behind that tractor as the, the soil's being tilled and you're seeing unearthed, you're seeing potatoes in the ground or you're going out there and picking beans and or a corn or whatever it is that you might have grown up with your grandparents possibly like I did with mine. My grandparents, uh, they always took that time and that opportunity to talk to us about different things. And one thing that I always remember my grandfather, my grandpa Muncy telling me was that it took usually four months to see seed time to harvest. That's usually what the time span was from the time that the seed was planted until the harvest was reaped. There was usually about a four month window. And so I remember early in the spring, we would plant seeds. And as little kids, it was always fun throughout those months to then go back over into my grandpa's garden and see buds spring up from the ground. And then eventually to see unearthed what it was that we had planted four months previously. And I feel like the Lord spoke to me the other day about this. We are at the very beginning of September. We are four months until the end of the year. I wanna challenge you this morning, church, aside from your tithe that you are so faithful to give, I wanna challenge you this morning to plant a seed, plant a seed this morning and see what God does in these next four months. It can be a small little seed. It can be something great. It can be whatever you feel the Lord directs you and speaks to your heart to give. But I wanna ask you above your tithe and offering this, or above your tithe this morning, that you would give in an offering and plant a seed this morning. Because I believe that in these four months at the end of the year, from September to December, I truly believe that we're gonna see a mighty harvest by the end of this year. We've all felt the hardships of this year. We could all enumerate on the things that we We've had to deal with and that we've gone through, but I know without a doubt that in this last four months, God's going to start to speak to us and he's going to start to move us and, and he's going to start to deal with us. And I just want to be a part of maybe planting a little bit into the ground and into the soil as to what God wants to do uh, in the next four months. I believe that by the end of December and even the beginning of January, we're gonna start to see that harvest come, come to place. And so I wanna challenge you this morning to be a part of that as we give today in our tithe and offering. Here comes the part that, you know, pastor says I'm good at by myself or I'm good at with him. I, I'm by myself this morning, so I'd rather him be by my side with this. But it's our, our statement of faith that we speak over our time of tithe and offering. If you would speak this with me this morning as we get ready to give. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. I'm a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out 
and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Everything that we have just stated there together is found in the Word of God. Those are all promises that we know we can rely on. I heard someone say it the other day and I wrote it down so that I could make sure I said it correctly. They added to theirs, bills to decrease and blessings to increase. And I love that. And I speak that over you today, church. On the screen, you'll see all the different ways that you can give. And I just want you to take this opportunity now, do it with a cheerful heart as we get ready to go into Word with Pastor. Hey guys, thanks for being with us again today. And I uh, wanna say how awesome Gwenny did, did a great job, of course, opening everything up. And then right there to our praise team, and they've just helped to usher you into the presence of God. And, and then Gwenny taking on, of course, not only the announcements, but also leading you in giving. Thank you for giving, thank you for being a part with us today. I hope you have your Bible. We're gonna look in some scripture today. And I wanna begin something new. We're coming out of a topic that I've ministered now. I, I only thought it was gonna be a short amount of time, but the Lord kept extending that idea of rebound. And I want you to keep that in your spirit, that bounce back ability, because we've got to bounce back. Bounce back as believers, as, as moms and dads, as students. Um, it just uh, We need to have that bounce back ability that only God can provide uh, so that we're able to have a great comeback. And the Lord does provide that. I love what the Word says in Psalm 92. It talks about that we're as palm trees. And palm trees go through some real severe storms, but they have an elasticity built inside their DNA so that they might bend but not break and then they're able to bounce back or have a great comeback. And here's the last thing, also be fruitful. So that's where I've been for the last so many weeks is I felt the Lord leading us to, to speak on that topic in the parking lot. And of course, we're there at Grayson High School. That's 50 Hope Hollow Road, Loganville, Georgia, 30052. I know throughout our time today on social media, there'll be uh, directions and different things that talk about where we are. And we want you to come visit with us in the parking lot as you feel comfortable. It's been great being outdoors and being around other believers, but also uh, creating an opportunity for those to feel comfortable and uh, to know that they're safe and to honor God, to magnify God. It's been great. The weather's been outstanding. We've had one Sunday we had to cancel, and even with that, it didn't even rain that day. But we had to make the decision because it looked like it was going to. Uh, but uh, this weekend, Labor Day weekend, as well as next week, looks outstanding. So plan to come out and be a part of it and bring somebody with you. Bring somebody with you, of course. But as I, I talked about it, you know, we're just planning on having that rebound ability so that we're able to bounce back as palm trees come back. And then here's that last thing I wanted to say a moment ago. You'll face the storms. You'll bend, not break. You'll come back or bounce back to your sturdy strength, but then palm trees are able to continue to be fruitful. Our lives are continuing, should continue to be fruitful. So have the comeback. But here's what I feel like the Lord wants to give me, give you today or speak today uh, through our time in the Word. And I want to talk about the battle zone. You and I are going to face Battles. Now, that's not something that you're probably caught off guard by, but I feel led to speak on that and that there's a battle zone that we're going to be in. Comebacks, we're going to move into, I believe, finish strong in the last four months of this year, heading into our new year. It's been an overwhelming, historic, and awful uh, 2020, but yet the Lord is working through it. And I declare over you that you're going to, sure, face the storm, we're all facing it, but you're going to bounce back. You're going to stand strong and sturdy, and you will be fruitful again. But be reminded that there is a battle zone that we're in. We're facing it. You know, this isn't the first time that we faced things collectively as a nation. Uh, when too long ago, it's for many of you, I, like, like myself, I remember where I was on 9-11. Here we sit on the weekend of Labor Day weekend, the first weekend in the month of September. We're only days away from, I think it's the 19th anniversary of 9-11. I remember where I was at. I, I remember what I was doing. I remember when I saw what took place, and I remember how it affected me and has changed our world from that moment to now. Well, we're also, and that was a battle. That was something that we realized it was that we were being attacked. Well, in the spiritual sense as well, you need to realize that you're in that battle, that you're facing situations, a storm that's overwhelming. You know, we had a storm here recently just uh, in our neighborhood and, and in the area, and it was at night, and it was very, very severe. The winds were blowing, and all was taking place, And but yet this house that we're in stood strong. You know, even though the lights flickered, the power went off for a little bit, Outside, you could see the debris and things that were affected by the storm. Uh, it was in the night, so we couldn't see it coming and didn't really know when it was going to end. We could see the radar, and the radar could tell us we were going to be in it for a minute. 
But ultimately, this house, and thank God for it, the foundation was strong and it stood strong and it weathered the storm. Sure, there were, as I said, debris, and there were at times during the night when the power flickered on and off, and that just let us know we were in the midst of it, but yet we were able to stand strong. Spiritually, you're going to be able to stand strong, but we have to maintain the awareness of being in a battle or a battle zone, not nodding off or falling asleep at the wheel or somehow becoming comfortable or overly comfortable or just even in some way conditioned to this new season that we're in and then forget Christ. The Bible talks about it. Now here I'm going to give you some scriptures today talking about battle zone. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Now reading on down through the rest of that chapter is powerful. But the first little bit talks about that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but it says this, for we are fighting against evil. Now I, I pull those words out because that's ultimately what it's saying. Evil, spiritual wickedness, a darkness and, and overwhelming powers uh, of the enemy and high and exalted places, that there is an enemy, an adversary that is fighting against you and I, and we are fighting against evil. We're in a battle, we're in a battle zone. But a firm foundation will mean there might be some debris outside, there might be at times the power flickers on and off, but you're gonna make it, you're gonna stand, you're gonna get through this storm. That's a powerful word, through. I want you to go ahead and begin to think on that word, say that word, if you would, come on, just type that on the screens, through, through, one of my favorite, songs that I often will sing is that great song by Andre Crutch, Through It All I've Learned to Trust in Jesus, Through It All I've Learned to Trust in God. You know, it talks about that I thank God for the mountains, thank Him for the valleys, thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. And then he goes on to talk about that how would He know the Word of God would work? How would He know how to lean on God unless He's been able to trust God in those times and God see Him through the storm? And then he goes on and begins to sing and continue to echo out what through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. You know, you and I have to realize that we're not in a playground, we're in a battleground. You know, this is not something that's just kind of faking our way through. We're in a battle today. Let me give you that first point today, that as Christians, we live a life in a battleground. A Christian life is lived on the battleground. Number one point. Well, man, that seems kind of heavy. Well, I don't want you to get convinced that we're living in somehow a playground. I don't want you to somehow take for granted the fact that we need to be men and women of God, bold men and women of God, and know that if God before us, who can be against us, but warriors for God's kingdom. It's not a playground. It's not something that we fake our way through. Anyone who follows Jesus, listen, will face opposition, and at times, severe opposition. And it's from, ultimately, as Ephesians chapter speaks, it's from the enemy. It's the adversary. It's Satan. It's from not just not flesh and blood, it might work its way through it, but ultimately it's from Satan sending that direct attack. Here's what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 3 in the New Living Translation, Paul is speaking to Timothy, the one he's mentoring, and here's what he says, endure suffering along with me. I love that Paul said, I'm not telling you to do something that I'm not doing myself. Don't don't do what I say and somehow not live out and do what I do. He said, no, I'm, I'm walking it out and I'm talking it out as well. He said, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He's saying, you know, there's some hardships. This is not a playground, a battleground. Christians live in a battleground and we're called to endure as good soldiers, not just stand on the sidelines and tell others how to do it. But he said, endure suffering along with me as a good or a solid soldier. You know, to be a good soldier, you have to make a choice that you're not gonna quit, that you're not gonna give up, you're not gonna retreat, you're not gonna run. If anything, you're gonna be as David, you're gonna run towards the giant instead of running from the giant. You're knowing that as God has given you in the past victory, God will give you victory now, God will give you victory in the future. Come on, if you would, write that word victory right there on the screen. Come on, thumbs up. Put those different ways on the screen that you're indicating there on YouTube or there on Facebook that you're in full agreement. There's power in agreement. I believe today is more of an interactive Sunday, more just sitting back and amening or hearing it, drinking your coffee and being here in the Word. I think it's interactive Sunday. Get on the screen. Put those hallelujah hands up. Put those yes, those thumbs up to say, yes, I'm in full agreement. I'm aware that we're in a battleground, not a playground, but I'm called to endure And I'm I'm called to not only just endure and watch from the sidelines, but I'm called to endure and be be a part of this and be a good soldier. And it is a choice that has to be made. You and I choose to follow that great general, our God, into battle, knowing that whatever battle we walk into, God has already given us. Here's that word again, 
That word through is important, but also victory. Victory is important. He'll bring us through to victory. I remember when I was the one uh, time that I coached uh, football. I wasn't the head coach, but I was the coach of the defensive backs and the receivers. And um, one of my, my associate pastor at the time as well, uh, Avery, was helping me. And we were coaching on the team. He was the offensive, defensive line. I was, as I said, the receivers and defensive backs. And we were just starting up, and my son Kendall was on the team. And I remember he hadn't played a lot of football, even though it was something that he wanted to play. And so this was the year, and, and it was great. He had played soccer and a lot of other things prior to that. Basketball was good at those things. His first year of football. So he had never really ran football drills, full contact football drills. But we had made the choice to be a part of this. And so when they first ran that, that drill, which was a tackling drill, and Kendall was the one running the ball and he was being tackled. He was actually lined up against probably one of the, uh, the strongest and the most athletic and competitive players on the team. Someone who wasn't their first year, but they'd played two or three years prior, so they knew what they were doing. They knew how to do what they were doing. I didn't think about it. I was watching the drill, but as soon as Kendall went out into the battle zone, if you will, with that ball as the running back, that young man brought serious just pain. I mean, he, he laid him out. And I got, Kendall got up and his helmet was turned to the side. He was looking out of the little, little deal here and he was blinking with his eyes and I realized, man, he just got everything knocked out of him. And he come back to me and, and, he, and he said, you know, can we go? <laughs> and, and I said, no, no, we're, we're here to endure. We're here to endure. You, you've, you've, got to, you've got to get into it. You got to stay with it. You, you, you got to make a choice right now to be a good soldier. Get back in line. Actually, it was his turn to tackle next, you know, and so he went and he made the tackle. But from that point on, he knew that we were going to endure, that the choice was made. We were, we were not quitters, and he wasn't a quitter. And what was awesome is by the end of the season that he was not only a, a great player, but also he was able to, to win an award as one of the most excellent players there on the defensive line. Well, if he would have quit early and not endured and been, not been a good soldier, he wouldn't have been able to achieve nor to live up to the, the ability that he had. See, we're going to be in battles. We're going to be in those moments where we have those, those battles that we face. For we're wrestling, it says. We're fighting against evil. But ultimately, we endure suffering along with. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm in it with you, Timothy. Paul said, I'm in it with you. You're not in this thing alone. Endures a good soldier. I'm enduring as a good soldier. Paul, in another moment, said to imitate him as he was imitating Christ. He said, follow along. I'm not just saying it, but I'm walking it. He said, let's endure, let's be a part. So it's a choice. Paul said, I'm making a choice to be a good soldier. And he was holding Timothy to that same accountability. I was holding Kendall to be accountable, to be someone that would be involved in that football team and go and move past the hardship and realize there was success to be attained. He found that out. You know, the Bible says also in 2 Timothy, another scripture here, 2 Timothy 4 and 7, in the New Living Translation, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is at the end of Paul's life. Paul wasn't one just at the beginning when he had someone to mentor. He said all the right things and was involved. And then somehow he didn't finish well. He finished, finished in an awful way. No, he finished strong. Paul, even at the end of his life, was saying, I've fought the good fight. I have endured. I've been a good soldier. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I haven't quit. In the battle zone, number one, you need to realize, as I've said it just a moment ago, the Christian life is a battleground. But there's choices to be made. And with our choices, we choose to go through and to what? To believe for victory, knowing that we're to endure and be good soldiers, not just be good soldiers at one moment, but to continue to be good soldiers. So we're able at the end to say that we've fought the good fight, that we've finished the race, that we have kept the faith. Amen. You know, not only in a battleground, and in, in a battle zone, do we have to be good soldiers and make a good choice, good choices that will lead us into victory, but also we need to realize that through, that's that word I wanted to say a moment ago, through, second point, through Christ, we overwhelm the enemy. Through Christ, not through you, not through your effort nor ability. You're going to have to be invested in it, but listen, it, we're going to work like it's all up to us, but no, it's all up to God. But through Christ, we overwhelm the enemy. Matthew 16, 18 says this. Jesus said this. He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. You know, there's been times I've read that scripture and thought somehow that the gates, that hell was coming against us. But no, it's us, the church, pushing against and overwhelming the gates of the enemy. With, the, with and through, hear that, with and through Christ, we... We're able to do all things. We break down the enemy's gates 
you know, we were able to burn down the enemy's gates, that we're able to overwhelm the enemy instead of you and I being overwhelmed. It is not, the, it's not we're overwhelmed, we overwhelm the enemy. You know, the, the idea, if you can, use your imagination to understand what Paul's describing. He's, he's talking about walled cities with mighty gates. Gates were the way in and gates were the way out. Gates were the areas that could be vulnerable also if they were able to, to somehow seize and challenge and break those gates down. You know, oftentimes in medieval warfare that they would light some type of type of log or and fashion it as a spear and they would run it on their shoulders towards the gate and lodge it in the gate and then it would engulf that gate with flame. And then once it was burned down, they were able to enter in and to overwhelm the enemy. That's what God's saying. God's saying, you know what, we as believers, we make a choice to understand, not get caught off guard. This is not a playground, it's a battleground. We're in a battle zone. We make a choice to be good soldiers and to endure. And then secondly, we also realize that this ain't just a moment thing, it's a lifetime thing. This is our lifestyle, to be good soldiers, to endure. We make that choice in and through Christ. And with and through Christ, we're able, as the Bible said, let me read it to you once again, that we are able to storm the gates of hell. It will not prevail against us, the collective us, which is the church. Isaiah 43 and 2, I've read this the last couple of weeks. It says, when you and I walk, hear it, through the fire, you shall not be burned. You know what's awesome is that God works in a way that he doesn't somehow just deliver us all the time. What he does, he does more than anything. He develops us. He will develop you and I in the midst of the battle zone. He'll not just immediately deliver us. Before God changes circumstances, he often will use circumstances to, hear this, change us. He promised to deliver us. He will deliver us in time, but he will not do it any earlier than the schedule that he has prepared because God thinks deeper and wider and higher than you and I. And if he delivers us too quickly, then we're not prepared, nor are we developed for the next level that God wants, to, wants you and I to access. He wants to develop us into his likeness the likeness of his son, Jesus. We want more of Jesus in our life and less of us. Well, it happens in those times of when we're in that battle zone, we make the choice to endure and to be good soldiers and to fight the good fight and to not give up and to keep the faith and then see that through Christ and with Christ, we're able to see the enemy's gates overwhelmed, burned down. Then we go in and take what the enemy has taken from us. We go in and realize that we're seeing more of God alive and happening in our life changed into, hear this, the likeness of Christ. And then we're able to access, hear this, God's potential. Man, we're not able to really access the God potential in our life, the God-given potential in our life until we're trusting God in the middle of the battle. We endure, we hold on, we don't let go. We fight that good fight with and through Christ. We see God give us the victory. We know that we're able to overwhelm the enemy. And then we get in those moments where we need a through. Some of you right now need a through in your life. You need to work your way through. But you know what the word says it so often using that thought or idea of not quitting, not retreating, not somehow trying to take a shortcut and somehow make your way around. Listen, the shortcut will only short circuit what God wants to accomplish in your life. And that's tap you into your God-given potential to be developed into what God has for you and not somehow just immediately delivered, but not learning the depth and width of God. He is a very help, a very help, a very effective help in the time of storm and trouble. He's an on-time, way-making, way mountain-moving God. Come on, amen. That's a good time to amen or thumbs up. God is good. He is faithful. Do you know what? Think of all the times in the Word of God. Have you ever noticed how many times in the Word of God the word through is used in Scripture? I, I put this down just because I want you to hear this. Because hear how often God used that word which to describe the process that He worked God's work, His people, people into being more like Him and less like themselves, out of sin into salvation. We see where the, the promised land, they had to go through the Israelites had to go through the Red Sea. They had to go through the wilderness. They had to go through the Jordan during flood season. Think about it. I've already said it, but here's a couple of scriptures. As they passed through, the Bible says in eight, Psalm 84, 5 through 7, as they passed through, passed through the valley of Baca, which means brokenness and loss and grief and weeping. They make it a spring. They go from strength to strength. What? As they pass through a broken place, God begins to release 
the ability to go from one strength to a greater level of strength. When you pass through the waters, as I read a moment ago, you will not. Uh, uh, well, I, he says, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. That's Isaiah 43, verse 2. God doesn't work in minutes, hours, or days. Listen, he works in seasons. And seasons is an idea of a process that he works in your and my life. We are in right now a season. A season that we wished, I'm sure, and we hoped 2020 would look a little different, but a season that we wish would only be hours, days, and maybe minutes at best. But you and I know uh, that's already passed. Many days have passed. Many hours have passed. Many minutes have passed. We're now into months That's what you call a season and a time where there is a process taking place in your life. And you need to embrace the fact that it's not playground time. If you're looking for ease and comfort, that's not what God calls you and I to. We're called to this. You're called to this season. It's a time of a battleground. But I declare over you, be a good soldier. Make that choice. Endure. Fight the good fight. Don't let it it be just a moment. Let it be a lifetime that you fight this fight. With and through Christ, you are able to overwhelm the enemy. As the word says, we, the church, are able to bombard the gates of the enemy and burn down the gates of enemy and take what has been taken from us through the fire, through the flood, through the river, through the battle. We're going to make it through. You're going to make it through. God doesn't work in minutes and hours and days. As I said, he works in seasons. He is what? The great refiner. Man, the thing about refining is the fact that it's, got, it's going to take what he wants, what's precious, put it into the fire, but it only what? Makes it strong, sturdy. And now, as I said earlier about battles and palm trees, they're able to bounce back and be fruitful. The refiner wants you and I to be fruitful in a way that we're able to go through the fire and then now be a vessel prepared where they were able to be fruitful, to carry God's glory. Ultimately, it is multiplication and fruitfulness that God wants to accomplish in your and my life. God wants to work as the great refiner. And the great refiner will only be able to take what is the ore and make it gold, and produce gold unless it's placed into the heat, into the fire. The potter knows how long the clay must stay on the wheel to become a thing of value beauty and usefulness. You and I are called to trust God today. You and I are called to just trust God and that he knows what he's doing. If you, if you agree right now, you might not like what's going on in your world right now, in your situation, your finances, your job, your health, but if you know you can trust God because he knows what he's doing, come on, just say amen right where you are. God knows what he's doing. Before you and I had a problem, God had a plan. Now it's our job, listen, be patient. Be patient while God is working for you and I, while God's opening doors and moving things out of the way, working things together. He's working it for your and my behalf. Be patient, I believe God would say today. While God is working for you, he's working in you. When you go through this experience, and as you and I move through this season, we'll look back. I do believe this. You and I will be, look, be able to look back and say it's not only historic when it comes down just to... to um, uh, just racial issues and things being worked out and it's moving to a better place. Uh, that not only financially in, in, in our world, but through COVID and all these things, but more than anything, we'll be able to look at it back as our personal relationship with God and say, and be able to look back to Him and see what He taught us, how we had more of Him when we came through this battle. Man, I declare that over. You're going to endure. You're going to fight the good fight. You're going to make that choice to be a good soldier. You and I are going to be able to overwhelm the enemy because why? With and through Christ, we can do those things. And when we see, as God brought them through the Red Sea, brought them through the wilderness, brought them through the Jordan, God's going to bring you and I through. And we'll look back and say, boy, we've caught more of his glory. we got more of him in our life than we've ever had because we've been through some battles, because God just didn't deliver us. He developed us. Come on, somebody. Amen. Don't you feel that? He delivered, sure, and he has delivered, and he will deliver. But more than that, don't you want God to develop more of himself, to tap into the God potential that's inside of you to be released into the world? That's what he needs. He needs less of us and more of him in us so that we're able to reflect his kingdom as ambassadors, ambassadors of heaven. That's what you and I are called to be. We're called to be light and darkness. So we need to let our light shine. But I know right now, as I kind of begin to wrap this up today, I, I know that many of you, and, and myself included, I'm not just, as Paul said, he said, not only endures a good soldier, as, as, as he says, along with me. Um, he's, so he's fighting. But I, I think for you and me as well, I'm not saying that you're just overwhelmed. I, I feel it too. 
I'm facing it. When in our are working through things and, of course, knowing what's going on in our world. I mean, here we are in, you know, Grayson High School. We're, we're online doing what we're doing and, and just knowing and believing God to open the doors in our new season. But we're making it through. But I'm sure that many of you feel overwhelmed today. But remember, I have to be reminded. i got to remind myself as I remind you. Listen, every finger pointed out there are three in my palm pointed back at myself. God is with you. God's with me. With Jesus, we're under protection. He's watching over us. So let me give a, maybe one or two more points here. As Christians, we don't hold ground, we take ground. It might look right now that you're retreating or you're losing ground, but listen, I believe God's going to allow you to abound and to take ground. Where sin is abounding, grace of God does that much more abound. As Christians, we don't hold ground, we take ground. We advance into the enemy territory with the gospel, and realize we've already won. We've already won. So, as we wrap up today, and I pray for you, it's not a playground. Realize today, the Christian life is a battleground. It's a battleground. But through Christ, we overwhelm the enemy. We have the power to overwhelm the enemy. And as Christians, we're called to take ground, to not hold or to lose ground, but to take ground. And lastly, we have victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus is yours today. Victory in Jesus is yours today. Here's what the scripture says. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that last point might seem very simple, but what's profound if you grab a hold of it, you have victory in Jesus. Victory is yours now but will you walk in it? I challenge you today as I'm challenging myself to walk out the very thing that we're being taught today, that I'm, I'm speaking to you. You've gotta walk out that victory. Walk out on that scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So today you might feel overwhelmed, but you have victory through Christ. I don't know what you're facing today, but I believe just in this encounter that we have, we've had worship and we've had now word that God can speak right there to where you are and he can open the door and he can spread the light of his love into your situation and you'll see him fight for you and make a way where there is no way and that things can change. If you don't know Christ as your personal savior, if that means you've never confessed with your mouth, you've never confessed as Romans 10 says and, and then believed in your heart in Jesus, you just kind of been doing life and didn't know what really life was all about. But today you'd say, you know what, I've, I, I need to give my life to Christ because I've not, I've not made much of my life to this point. But with Christ, you're going to see God do some amazing things. Or maybe you'd say, I've been in church all my life, but I've really just kind of played the game. Well, that's the kind of person that I was. I was not the right person. I was a religious person, but God changed my life 30 plus years ago. I challenge you today to confess Christ as your personal Savior. And then I, confess, I challenge you to confess that you have victory through Christ and then walk it out. Would you just pray this prayer with me? It's a prayer of rededication for some of you. If it's for some of you that you never confessed Christ, I'm gonna lead you in that prayer as well to receive him. And then we're just gonna declare victory is ours and we're gonna endure as good soldiers. We're gonna fight to the very end the good fight of faith. We're gonna know we have the power to overwhelm the enemy. We realize that we're not in the playground, we're in the battle zone. And we remember as Christians, we don't hold ground, we take ground. God's gone before us. We take ground and victory is ours, so we should walk in it. Just repeat this after me, just pray with me if you would. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you my life today. I rededicate my life to you today. I realize that without you, there's not the peace, there's not the joy, there's not the purpose. There's an emptiness in my life without you. But today I receive Jesus, your son, as my savior. I receive Jesus as the one to be the ransom for my sin. I give you my life, God, for the rest of my life, and I receive Jesus as my savior. And now let the Holy Spirit touch my mind and my heart and empower me to be what you've called me to be. And help me, say this with me today, help me walk in victory. Help me be a good soldier in this battle zone. Help me to endure. Help me to know that I have overwhelming power 
over the enemy through you, Christ. Help me to know that I have victory today and that we're gonna take ground. Can you say that right now? You'd say the last thing you probably would feel and even think is you're gonna take ground back in your marriage or take ground back in your finances or take ground back you know, with your, your kids or a friend, whatever it might be, or in your joy or peace. But today, just say it, I'm gonna walk in victory. We're gonna take ground for the kingdom in Jesus' name. And everyone out there, if you pray because you never have known the Lord as your Savior or you're rededicating your life or, or you just know you've not been walking in victory, you've been walking more like a victim and not, not, a, not victor, but you've been praying for victory. You're a good soldier going to endure. And just say, we say, amen, amen, amen. We love you, church. I believe that today is an awesome day. Hope you have an amazing Labor Day weekend and we'll see you next weekend. Many of you hopefully are there. Uh, at the church parking lot, uh, which is Grayson High School. They're at Grayson High School, 50 Hope Hollow Road, Loganville, Georgia, 30052, at 10.30, uh, online, YouTube, Facebook, and then, of course, in the parking lot at 9.30. We love you so much. Um, you are victorious through Christ. So we love you. Have an amazing Sunday afternoon. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Let this count upon you and give you peace. May he cover you with a name that's greater than any other name. That's the name of Jesus. And Jesus gives what? Hope for today and life for you tomorrow. God bless. Hey, Hope and Life family. I want to jump on and remind you real quick of all the ways you can connect to us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And all the ways you can connect with us are going to be listed at the bottom of the screen below. Make sure to reach out because we want to stay connected to you during this time. We love you and we are looking forward to hearing from you on all of these platforms.